But once again, this is question number seven. The question is asking, you know, several things. The first one is that explain why development of a profit maximizing model here requires uh, gamma being uh, zero, a less uh, greater than zero, but less than one. I think that's kind of obvious because if gamma is uh, more than one, for example, square, what does that mean? That means this production function Q equals, by the way, sometimes we just write f of kl equals 10 times minimum of kl to the power gamma, or we write q equals 10. So this means the same thing. This is the production function, all right? You either write it as f of kl or just q equals uh, this thing. It means the same thing. So, the, uh, so if this is the production function, if gamma is, for example, 2, well, then this production function is going to be an increasing returns to scale. What does that mean? If you double your inputs, right, 2 times k, 2 times l, you are going to quadruple your output, which is like, whoo, too much. So what does that say? I mean, that means, but by the way, I mean, in reality, there is no such technology as far as I know. Uh, I mean, if you have any technology, uh, let's be partners because we can actually be the richest guy in this world. So the increasing returns to scale means, right, I mean, I, I double the inputs, but my outputs will quadruple. So imagine how profitable business this is. It's like just with a you know, tiny increase in inputs, I can extend the number of outputs I can produce like so easily. And so... That means my marginal cost is going to be very, very, very small. That in fact means like uh, the optimal you know, number of output I should choose is like infinite because the more input I use, even more output I can produce. And so it gets even cheaper and cheaper if I do not. Uh, you see what I mean? So therefore, the profit maximization problem is going to have like you know, no optimal solution because, you know, choosing Q as large as possible is always a good strategy. So therefore, you have to make, at, at least from the technical point of view, you have to make this production function either constant returns to scale or decreasing returns to scale. And in reality, we do have decreasing returns to scale, meaning the more input I put, uh, yes, the, the output level will increase, but you know, it's not going to be like when I double my inputs, uh, I'm not going to be able to double my outputs. It's going to be, I don't know, less than that, 1.5 times more output maybe. So that means there's going to be some sweet spot of input levels where I do not want to sort of produce, uh, sort of choose my inputs more than that because behind, sort of uh, beyond this input levels, What's going to happen is that my marginal cost is going to explode or, or, or going to be very large. And so I have to stop there. So it's going to be my sort of profit maximizing quantity level or profit maximizing input combination level. So the bottom line is, is that for, for technical reasons, as just I tried to explain, uh, your production function should be either constant or decreasing returns to scale. Again, if it is constant returns to scale, the previous example, like the previous example, we're going to have a constant cost function, meaning the marginal cost is going to be fixed. And so it's going to be, again, a problematic, like when the price is greater than marginal cost, a marginal cost is not going to be a function of quantity. So this is what marginal cost will look like. Oops. So this is what cost function. And so the marginal cost function is going to look like this. All right. Uh, so this is the marginal cost. So if the price of the mar if price is greater than marginal cost, that means you should produce as much quantity as you like. And if price is less than marginal cost, that means you shouldn't produce anything. Just you know, shut down your 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 firm. And then if price is equal to marginal cost, everything is optimal. So it's not really a, a uh, I mean a, a good solution. I mean here we don't really have any solution. And so, in order to make sense that we have an optimal solution of the profit maximization problem, we better have uh, decreasing returns to scale, which basically means gamma is less than one, all right? Uh, when obviously why it has to be greater than zero, well, if it is zero, right, the production function has nothing to do with the inputs. Whether you use zero input or hundred or thousands of inputs, you're going to get exactly 10 units of output. 
because gamma is equal to zero, which makes no sense. When gamma is negative, that means like this is negative one, for example, you're going to have 10 divided by minimum of something KL. What the heck does that mean? That means when I increase my capital and labor, uh, I will actually produce less. It's like, what? So more input means less output. I mean, this doesn't make sense really. And so the sensical, uh, sensible uh, uh, parameter range is zero, one. Okay. So supposing that gamma is equal to one half, All right? So basically uh, squared of it. By the way, this gamma is where exactly? Uh, so when gamma is equal to one half, this is what we mean, all right? So when I say minimum of KL gamma, it, or one half, it means, right? I mean, you cannot take, so it's not like I take the square root of K and L and then minimize it. Uh, well, this guy is equivalent to saying, I first minimize it and then take the square root of it, all right? Okay, so if gamma is equal to one half, calculate the firm's total cost function and profit function. And then if R is blah, blah, W is blah, blah, and P is blah, blah, how many quantity is gonna be pr produced? Well, so, well if, you, if you solve part B, the rest of the question is easy. Uh, well, we already did solve uh, similar questions. Here, the only difference is that the production function is different. Why so? Well, if you try to calculate MRTS, this time I'm not gonna make any mistake. Well, this is undefined. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, well, kind, well, yeah, all right. Um, why is that? Well, try to, uh, well, the, 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 try to draw the uh, isoquant curve of this functional form, all right? Well, you'll see that it's, it's, an, it's an awkward function. It, maybe it, it doesn't have this exact L shape because of this square root, but nevertheless, it has a weird functional form, all right? So what does that mean? That means you should be, you know, there's different ways of solving this type of questions. One is draw, try to draw the isoquant of this uh, production function and then figure out where the optimal could be. Uh, but alternatively, I think at this point, you should be very uh, confident about this intuition. Whenever I have a Leontief type of function, this is a weird Leontief function, right? Uh, we take the square root of the Leontief function, which is minimum of K and L. So whenever I have this type of functional form, boy, I mean, it says, uh, look at my inputs K and L, uh, whenever I have K different than L, I can't really achieve optimality. Why is that? Well, because the minimum of these two matters in, 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 in terms of output levels. So therefore, if for example, K is less than L, that means I'm gonna use K amount of capital and K amount number of labor. The remaining L minus K number of labors I will basically waste them. Uh, they will not be used. But remember, everything is, is costly. All inputs are costly. So that means as long as this is not zero, I shouldn't be really, I mean, I, 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 that means it, I, I'm not really optimizing anything. So that means when I have this sort of uh, a Leontief type function, whether it's square root or to the power one third, doesn't matter, you should be choosing K and L the same amount, all right? As simple as this. Well, okay, so what else then? Uh, this is the uh, optimal input combination. Uh, remember, if I want to minimize my cost, the optimal input combination is such that I'm gonna use same amount of capital and labor, good. But how much capital do I need? Well, that depends on how much quantity you would like to produce. So if you wanna produce Q amount of output, 10 uh, minimum of uh, KL. Well, that means, remember K is equal to L. So whenever I see L, I'm gonna put K. So that's equal to K. So that means 10 squared of K equals Q. All right, so that means take the square root of both sides, K 
times 100 equals Q square. So K is equal to Q square divided by 100. This is how much capital I would like to use. How much labor do I want to use? Well, equal amount. So L is equal to also Q square divided by 100. That's it. Well, what is my cost function then? Uh, optimal cost. Always. Uh, C, which is a function of Q, is equal to how much capital times, oops, uh, the price of capital. What is the price of capital? I don't know. It's R. Plus uh, labor. What is the price of labor? Usually denoted by W. All right. So these are, we assume, are given to us. Uh, but at this question, at this point, I don't know them yet. Fine. So what is the K? Well, K is going to be Q squared divided by 100 times R plus L is the same, Q squared divided by 100 W. So therefore, the cost function is equal to Q, Q, Q squared divided by 100 parentheses R plus W. Again, don't forget here, the only variable is Q. R is a fixed number, W is a fixed number for this firm. Uh, because in, in, in this chapter, we assume that the producers are price takers in the input market as well. All right. Meaning, uh, regardless of how much input they use, they cannot change the input prices. If they could, well, then th this entire optimization problems would be different. All right. Be, be careful about it. So the, the producers are in, uh, uh, price takers both in the input market and also on the out output market. So this is what the optimal cost function would be. If there's any objection, make your objection now. Otherwise, I'll keep going with this functional form. So once I have this profit function, what is the, I'm sorry, cost function, what is the profit? Well, profit is a function of quantity. It's price times quantity minus cost, which is Q squared divided by 100 R plus W. I assume that there's no fixed cost. So you know what? Uh, the profit maximizing, oops, Quantity is going to solve this, which basically means P minus 2Q divided by 100 R plus W equals zero. So that means the, the optimal amount of quantity here, remember, I mean, not remember, but sort of uh, point out that the marginal cost is not uh, fixed. It's not constant. The marginal cost increases with quantity. The more quantity you choose, the higher output your, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, the higher marginal cost you are going to get. And so therefore, there's going to be a, a sweet spot where price and marginal costs are equal to one another. That sweet spot is going to be the optimal quantity. So Q is basically going to solve, this is 50, uh, 50 P divided by R plus W. So whatever the market price, whatever the input prices, this is how much quantity this firm is going to choose, uh, produce. And so you can answer part C and D accordingly.